All right, first and foremost, I had to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Uh, and uh, with that, we want to go into this Revelation the ninth chapter. Uh, a lot of people is going crazy off this sermon. We spoke about it a little bit uh, in videos that we've done recently, but we want to thoroughly go into Revelation the ninth chapter to thoroughly confirm through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that it has nothing to do with the particle collider. Uh, that they got up at the CERN building over there. And what is it, Switzerland, something like that? Uh, yeah, Switzerland, which is wicked as hell, you know, and they trying to uh, create weapons. and Yeah, just look up any matter yeah. weapons. Go ahead, yeah, and, and, and obtain the godlike particle so they could try to recreate recreate creation. Okay, okay. okay. They're they doing wickedness with it, but let's not make it more than what it is. They're not going to blow a portal open and demons are going to manifest. That's crazy, y'all. Chill out. Yeah. Revelation 9 has already came to pass and it's dealing with World War One. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to thoroughly prove it because guys have been saying, well, what a, well, how does it, this, this, and that. You know, we kind of give them the brief synopsis, but now, again, we want to thoroughly go into World War One, the fifth trumpet, and everything that has to deal with it through the Spirit. Okay. You know, uh, go ahead, read it. All right, this is Revelations 9 and 1. It uh -huh. says, And the fifth angel sounded, uh -huh. and I saw a star fall from heaven uh -huh. into the earth. Uh -huh. And and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So this is when they say that they're going to blow a hole in the damn dimension, and, you know, all these angels are going to come out of this bottomless pit. Now, that's not what's going on. First, we have to understand that angels are used in Scripture to influence war. Read Daniel, the 10th chapter, and you'll find all about that. How angels are used to influence wars, mm -hmm. all right? Global conflicts. Right. You see what I'm saying? Keep going on. And then real quick, the bottomless pit. Let's, right. let's make sure. The bottomless pit is in reference to Europe. People wonder why we say the bottomless pit is in reference to Europe. First, let's go here. Let's take a look at the resources of Europe. If you notice, the majority of Europe's resources are gray, meaning what? It's machinery. In order for them to even build the machinery that they use to export, they have to actually import precious metals from elsewhere to build their vehicle, their automobiles. The, the main exporter majority of, especially Western European countries, are motor vehicles. They don't have a, a rich natural resources, all right? Like, say, Africa. Is anything gray uh, when we look at Africa? No. All of these are natural resources that are that you can find in this actual land, right. all right? That's one aspect of why it's the right. bottomless pit. And if I could say this Go ahead, quick. brother. Uh, the 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 lack of natural resources. That's just a secondary explanation okay. to what the bottomless pit is. The okay. bottomless pit is really in reference to the mass deaths because of war, all right, and really because of the plagues and everything that the Lord been plaguing that place with, okay. all right. Um, and it, and we're gonna prove that through this through this next document. Yeah, okay. And that's why Habakkuk two says, uh, um, he is like hell. This white man is like hell. And is as death, and it cannot be satisfied. That's the bottomless pit. Wherever the white man go, he creates mass murder and mass death. Right? Yeah, like so the, uh, the the pale horse. Yeah, come. Which rests on Esau in the fourth part of the earth, which is the Americas today. Yeah, he's the least resourceful, and he's the biggest killer. You know, um, this is the the death toll for World War One. All right, which we know World War One was predominantly fought in Europe. We're talking about 17 million people. That's in World War One alone. Then we go up here to World War Two, which largely was fought in Europe as well. We're looking at 60 to 85 million deaths. So what is that total here? We round it up and then adding in and factoring in other European wars right, that yeah, occurred. The French like, war, the French war, and then if you go down, even a uh, Russian civil and foreign intervention. Kind. We're looking at five to nine million people. We yeah, go down here. Then you go down. There's a. Um, one that says eight to nine million. Um, what you talking about the Dugan War? Dugan Dugan War? Nah, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's Whatever. Right. But anyways, it's upwards of 120 million uh, people dying from war from war casualties totally, over yeah. uh, due to the European countries and in, in that area. Come. Uh, starting from when they first came back into power, uh, 13, 1400. Come. Come. All right. So that's what it's talking about: the bottomless pit, the mass death. All right. Nothing but death comes from Europe, man. That's it. All right. Uh, and we go back to go back to Revelation yeah. nine. Okay, right. go ahead, verse two. All right, Revelation nine and two. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. What happens in a war? They're dropping bombs. They're shooting people. Planes are crashing. All kind of stuff is happening. So it's smoke. If you watch any 
period piece of World War One or World War Two or any place where a major war is on a major conflict is taking place, you're gonna see smoke. It's always smoke Come. present and lingering. Come. Right, go ahead. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts. Locusts came, right? It's going to be locusts coming out of this portal from another universe, a parallel. Nah, chill out. We're going to go into a read. Upon the earth, uh -huh. and unto them was given power, uh -huh. as, the, as the scorpion of the earth have power. So there was a power given to these locusts that came out of the smoke, that emerged from the smoke. Yeah, as yeah. the scorpions, dealing, dealing with, uh, from the tail of these locusts, they're going to be hurting people or able to sting people because that's what scorpions do. They sting with their tail. So these locusts were going to sting, sting with their tail. That's dealing with the World War I planes. And brothers are going to go into it. Uh, and the machine, the rear gun, the rear gunners from yeah. World War One. Let's get this script. Let's skip down here for a second mm -hmm. to this. And they had tails like unto scorpions. Mm -hmm. And their stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men for five months. Now, the, the tails is emphasizing the power that was had in the tails of these locusts now let's go here let's go here now mind you matter of fact let's go to the, the plane picture first mind you this is what's going on all right this is what you see in world war ii right john the revelator so like i, was, I just want to say yeah. so they know uh this is actual pictures of uh yeah these are actual pictures of what was going on during these wars when the planes was in there right John the Revelator was living in 2000 years before they was digging the planes, anything like that. So he's looking up at this, at what we're looking at right here. And he's trying his best to describe that. So what he said was locusts. Is that not an accurate description of what we were just saw? Locusts in the air looks like a plague of locusts is in the sky. Okay, but these locusts were like scorpions. Why were they like scorpions? Because they had in their tail to do hurt. Now, let's go here play this video here world war one see that like the locust all right right we got to remember the 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 john the revelator this is two thousand year old prophecy coming to pass all right yeah he didn't know what to say it was yeah it was these jets these planes you know he's he's explaining it the best way he can and we clearly can see now when going back over the history what he was talking about uh, right, right. Now we're going to see what it means with the scorpion and the tail. The power was in their tail to do hurt. All right? It's about to be right. You see that? This is what we call a rear gunner. He's flying. He's in the back with that thing drilling. You understand what I'm saying? With that machine gun, making it happen. That's what it means when in their tail or in the back of the plane is where the hurt was, where they had power to do hurt, man. Gone. All right? Gone. Stinging them, yeah, stinging them, man. With, that, with them see? fifty caliber, fifty caliber Look, shells. That's he was stinging. Look, he's gonna sting something, man. <laughs> okay, so that's what the prophecy is talking about. This is what you know, John the Revelator was witnessing, man. All right, and he was just doing his best to liken it into to terms that the people of that time could understand. Kind. All right. Back in uh, verse four. Back, yeah, yeah, back and four, yeah. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now we know locusts is all they eat is grass, so it's not talking about actual locusts. Come. Okay, it says neither any green thing, uh -huh. neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of their fo on their for uh, sorry seal of God on in their foreheads. Yeah, and we gotta deal with what that's talking about. What is the grass and what is the green thing? Okay, let's find out real quick. We're gonna go here now. That word grass is in the Greek. Strong's G5528, it's cortos, cortos, right? Now watch this. It means the place where grass grows, animal graves, whatever. Now watch this. Let's go to Matthew 13 and 26. But when the blaze, Yahweh Shai speaking. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Anybody who has prerequisite understanding of Matthew the 13th chapter, the parable of the wheat and the tares, lets you know that the wheat is dealing with the Israelites. The tares are dealing with... The Edomites that look like Israelites, that are products of rapes and things like that that occurred during slavery. All right, but they look like Negroes. They grew up with Negroes, but the whole time they're actually so-called white people patrilineal. Yeah. So the blade is talking about the Israelites, all right, which is the same word used for the grass that was not to be hurt in the book of Revelations. It also said, nor, nor any green thing or the trees. Let's go now to Isaiah 61 and 3. Read that for uh, me. Isaiah 61 and 3. To appoint them that to to appoint unto them that mountain mourn so like that mourn in Zion. Zion to give unto them beauty of 
for ashes, uh -huh. the oil of joy for mourning, uh -huh. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, uh -huh. that they might be called trees of righteousness. So what are the Israelites going to be called? Trees of righteousness. So when it says the grass and the green trees not being hurt, you mean the Israelites were not being hurt. Right. right? Con, very, very low number of Israelites died in World War uh, One. Where are we at here? Right here. Uh, uh, read that for me. What it says saw? overall about 800 black. We only got five minutes. Okay. It says, overall, about 800 black soldiers total were killed in World War One. You see that? So only 800 were killed out of 200 to 350,000 that actually served. Very small numbers of us came. We already read the numbers. 17 million people died and only 800 of them were so-called black men. Letting you know what that's talking about. That's All prophecy. Right? All okay. prophecy. They didn't have the seal of the Most High. I mean, it was the Edomites and other nations that was mostly being killed. All right, let's continue on here. Verse 5. Verse 5, yeah. It says, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. And so that's why not, not many, the majority, hundreds of thousands of Israelites were not killed. And them 800 that were killed were probably the tares that were speaking. Of. I would imagine that they probably <laughs> right. was products of the slave master, man. Read on. Come. But that they should be tormented five months. Five months. Five months is dealing with prophetically the uh, the five years approximately that World War Two lasted. Con, okay, World War One. World War One, rather. Let me not get that twisted because you know a prophecy sometimes a day, a week, a year, a month. These things are likened in various parts of time, but the way everything lines up in regards to this attests to the fact that it's the five years that World War Two. I mean, World War One approximately lasted. Right, right. About about five years. Con, that's right. All right. It says, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion. When he strike at the man. Stinging him with that machine gun in the back. Go ahead. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. You've seen this in uh, uh, all the war movies. And people were screaming for their mothers. They wanted death. They weren't getting it. Right. All and right? they didn't have sufficient doctors back then. Exist. So they were just hurting. Man. Right. Con. <laughs> Go ahead. It says, uh, and, it, and, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Mm -hmm. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Uh -huh. It's dealing with when you see a, a, hear a stampede of horses, that's dealing with the engines or the motors and the planes, how loud it was. Yeah, they had what? Horsepower, right? Con. Read. It says, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces as the faces of men. Meaning men were driving these locusts. Con, men were right. driving these planes. That's right. Okay? And they had hair as the hair of women. Now, when you get into that, that's talking about the actual uniforms that Kaiser Wilhelm, which is the angel, had his men to wear. All exactly. Right? And a lot of people have a problem with him being the angel with the bottom of his pit, but we're going to go all the way into it. Go okay. ahead. With this. Such was the case of what are they wearing? Is that, does that look like the hair of women? That look like somebody got one of them. You know they've been wearing that ponytail on top of their head? Okay. Look just like that. Right. You see what I'm that, saying? That's the hair of women. All right. That the, the Prussian army would wear. All right? But that's it on that. Just proving it out for the sake of time. You know, so locked to the Akiyam, we're just going through to meet the time restraints. All right? Uh, well, we're, this is, again, this is just talking about, you know, the planes and things like that. Uh, we could even skip down to... Uh, verse 9, 11. Give, uh, verse 11, yeah. Right, verse Kaiser. 11. It uh -huh. says, and they had a king over them. The king, that's Kaiser Wilhelm, which is... Which Kaiser just means a Caesar or a ruler, all right? right? Which is the second, I believe. Go ahead. Which he was the last uh, emperor of, uh, In Europe. of Europe. Yeah, okay. All right? That's what makes him the angel of the bottomless pit, the king of the bottomless pit. All right? It says, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into that, I want to say something. Russia, French, and uh, uh, Great Britain had to team up, them three, just to take down Kaiser Wilhelm. Okay. All right? Because that's how much power he had. All right? But now, when you get into this angel... You can pull up that uh, document real okay, quick. Okay, yeah, come. So like it. Um, what we got here? This is the angel of Kaiser <laughs> Wilhelm. All right? <laughs> the angel of the bottom of his pitch right here, man. Right. Showing you that they depict him as the angel of Europe. Okay. And then now watch. Not only that, look at this. He it has a church. Has a whole church erected to him. Are you kidding me? This is the angel of the bottom of his pit, man. Come. All right. Not no damn mythical creature that CERN is going to let loose, man. All right. Uh, who's, uh, it says uh, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, uh -huh. and it, but in the Greek tongue have it have have his name Apollyon. Read that twelve verse so we can All see. Right. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Letting you know that that whole thing we just read about the fifth seal, the fifth angel sounding, that's talking about World War One or the one woe, and there's two more woes coming, which is World War Two and the final World War Three, which we're getting ready to come into. That's right. You know, so that's letting you know 
what Revelations 9 is dealing with, World War I, Kaiser Wilhelm, and the planes that were utilized to fight World War I. Right. All right? That's what it's dealing with. All praises to Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shai, and Shalom.